What is generative AI? There are two well-known types of AI, predictive and generative machine learning models. Uh, the model's algorithms determine patterns in the training data set, and this teaches the model what to do with the encoding new data that fit these patterns. Generative models use patterns in data to create new content. The intention of the model is not accuracy or truth or beauty, but rather to generate new text or images or sound that are equivalent in form to what humans can write or create. Uh, an example of these uh, models uh, are uh, large language models such as uh, GPT-3 or GPT-3.5. And um, these models use probabilities derived from sequences of words from a very large corpus to determine uh, what word should come next as response. Uh, as response are generated like one word at the time, like per word. And um, these things are huge. Uh, to give you an idea of the dimension of the of the GP3 model, they they use almost five billion words from the public internet, including internet books, all the Wikipedia. So it, those things are, are are huge, and it's like, um, so like I say, like this this is not something you can cook at home. Let's say. You mentioned GPT-3. Does that have something to do with ChatGPT? Absolutely. Uh, ChatGPT interacts with you to provide human-like responses to prompts or queries and it can create answers to questions, summarize concepts, create poems, write computer code, draft essays, email, simulate text text conversations and all this stuff. And ChatGPT is, uses the GP3 model that we just talked about and GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. And that's an example of machine learning model that can generate new data. And this means not fetching data and serving up like a, sort of like an old school chatbot, but instead it has been trained using this massive amount of data that we just talked about in such a way that it's actually generating unique responses to your query or prompt on the fly. There's been intense interest in, in ChatGPT due to the impressive breadth, depth of natural language ability compared to early chatbots. ChatGPT is not the only generative AI system. For example, there are others like DALI and Stable Diffusion that can generate images from text, others can use from sound, um, machine translation, the, for coding, uh, to do math, and uh, they can serve like a wide variety of purposes. Are there any ways that I can use it to help me with course assignments or projects? Yes, there are many ways to use and to misuse. And one, one thing that it can be used uh, um, in your classwork can be to, to, to as an aid to brainstorm for a project or assignment. If you would like to explore different perspectives or ideas beyond your own thoughts, you could try asking the machine. Suppose you're interested in the relationship between you know, humans and pets, for example, and how to stress uh, figures into that relationship, but you have not yet decided you know, where to focus. Uh, you could ask ChatGPT, what are some topics to investigate relating to human stress and pets? And it would respond you know, with a set of possibilities and, and, and give you ideas that you can then adapt and refine. But there have to be some limitations, right? Yes. Uh, remember the generative aspect of these tools? Although they may often provide with good quality information because they ingested you know, all these books and the whole Wikidata thing, they will also provide you with misleading or fictitious information. They can produce realistic sounding results and even provide you citations through academic sources to support the summary provided. But while the writing seems plausible, the sources said it don't actually exist. And um, well, the key point to know about generative AI is that there is no reasoning use with the answer of these prompts. The tools are not thinking like rationally or creatively when responding to your question or like responding to this problem on, 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 on the instructions is generating text specs based on what it has learned about patterns so like the probability of words follow one another and uh, from human created work in, a, in its training data set so when it generates text it simulates these patterns with a degree of freedom of course and uh, with such such a large data set and human reinforcement technique uh, to fine tune it uh, after training, it can generate responses that are impressively human-like and, and often correct also, and, and sometimes, but sometimes you know wrong or misleading. So you have to be careful with this. I see. So are there any things that I should be cautious about when using generative AI? But 
Yes, of course. Uh, well, in addition to text and images generating uh, by these tools, like as we already mentioned, uh, they also can be used to create deep fakes, uh, which are, uh, you know, like the definition would be believable media generated by deep neural networks. And these deep fakes uh, are images, video, and audio that, you know, they, that you cannot really tell apart from real humans. So while doing these things may offer creative possibilities, they can also be used uh, for deliberately misleading viewers. So that, that's kind of a danger of the technology. Also, the prevalence of hallucinations or false information is, a, is significant. And sometimes it's kind of fun to play with these things with ChatGPT to ask it to, to do like, like fun things like naming, you know, like lakes in Mars or, or stuff like that. It, ca it can be kind of fun but um, it can also be used to create uh, uh, fake news and, it can, and, and because the outputs are quite believable, it, it, can be, you, you, it can be a problem. And there's also the issue of biases, like what we just mentioned, uh, um, uh, this, because this model was fed up, was fed with, uh, created based on the Wikipedia and all the public internet, there is an inherent bias there, like in terms of, for example, there's a language bias, it's like most of the content is in English and mo basically most of the content is written by people who write stuff and uh, most of the people are, you know, uh, 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 tend to be overrepresented in this data set. So that can lead to, to you know, privileging or, or, or certain point of views or, or that sort of stuff. So it sounds like there are some promising uses, but also a lot to consider. Certainly. There are many positive ways we can use AI tools and it will be used in academic and research settings. Uh, many see the release of ChatGPT as this pivotal moment, you know, in the widespread application and use of, of this type of uh, generative uh, AIs. That said, to take full advantage of AI in your learning work and, uh, and, and in your studies, you need to understand your subject matter well enough so that you can both guide the tool and assess the output, like, at the end, this is a tool and it's like a hammer, you know, you can use a hammer to build a table and you can use a hammer to destroy a table. So you need to know what you're doing, you need to know uh, your subject matter, you need to know how to prompt this thing, you need to evaluate the, the results of this stuff. So, yeah, like it won't replace the, the system for developing your own knowledge on on a subject that you're learning or, or exercising like deep critical thinking skills.